this Twisted video, we're going to be having a look at the final figure from the Clive Barker McFarlane Toys Twisted Soul Series 1, as we have a look at figure number 6, Mongroid. is a bit of a different beast in the sense that he's not actually standing up rather instead he is on all fours if we take the measurements from the figure's hand to his well his other hand mongroid is about seven inches in length and maybe for fun as well we'll get some measurements going for how tall he is he's about three and a half inches tall much like talisac i feel like mongroid here is more of a tortured soul rather than the other four figures in which I felt like they were minions of hell. Very much so, this guy is a tortured soul and a remarkable sculpt to be had on this particular figure release. Let's first thing, first things first, let's have a look at his face. Clearly, he ain't digging what's happening here. He's been bound and just has slime and mucus coming out of his mouth here. Clearly, though, he is unhappy with what's happening. Uh, once again, lots of chains. That's something you're always going to get with McFarlane stuff, is you're going to get tons and tons of chains. Now, this guy's got to be a little bit more difficult to get out of packaging because the chains are actually inside a clamshell case, but then they're taped. So when you take that off, don't just yank the figure out. You might want to have them just carefully trim away the tape area and peel it away carefully that you don't ultimately rip the chains in the process. There's what the underside of the figure looks like very bloodied lower torso here and interestingly enough he's got hands rather than feet hands at the top which would be normal but instead of feet on the bottom he's got hands so again he's just been thrown together kind of like a Frankenstein sort of uh, creature here and of course the big cell of this particular figure is the very large mouth that is sticking out from his lower half Initially looking at it, it kind of reminds me of that scene in The Thing where the doctor is trying to resuscitate a person and, and the chest, the stomach area opens up and clamps down, ripping off his hands. Also kind of reminds me of a sandworm from Beetlejuice. But there's no real posability on this. It looks like it's kind of rubbery, but you can't really open and close the mouth. But it's got such a great look to it. It looks like more than one layer of teeth possibly two or three on the top, another three or so at the bottom. Very mucusy looking mouth here as well. As you could probably understand as well, this, this guy doesn't really have the most... Well, he has posability, but certainly not in the greatest of means, because really anything above what you're seeing right here will throw off the sculpt and pose in which McFarlane was intended. This is not really one that you want to be posing a lot of. Before we get to that though, again, some really great looking wrinkles here on the chest portion. It kind of gives him a sense of age, so it's hard to kind of determine how old this guy probably is. Maybe he's been like this in hell for a very, very long time. Maybe in fact they actually use him as maybe a, like a guard dog or some sort of guard minion that kind of guards the gates. Of course we can read further into that by reading the six chapters, one legacy that come included with all six figures. I haven't read it actually at the time of leading up to these reviews, but I hope to read it after the fact and maybe get a little bit more insight about what these tortured souls are all about. Again, very minimal on the level of paint on this guy, kind of relying more on tans. He's got, again, very neutral looking body, but I think that's how it accents well when you incorporate things like the, the, red, the blood red, for example, and the dark, dingy brown areas around the mouth here. By keeping this guy pale, it really allows a lot of this stuff to shine, as opposed to if they had heavily painted this guy, which I think really would have detracted a little bit from the overall execution of how good this guy really looks. Let's look at his posability. Uh, his head is on a rotational, just a, just a swivel. There's not really much you can do all that with the face. Uh, again, the arms rotate back and forth. So do the hands. 
really don't want to do too much. I mean, what I what I did was I kind of kept them flat on a table, and then I just kind of rotated the limbs until everything kind of sat flush. You might find a lot of instances where if you have the legs, for example, or the hands rotated the wrong way, it doesn't sit, you know, completely flush. So you might want to just put it on a table and just compensate and just kind of adjust it until everything kind of lays nice and flat on them. Uh, both the arms and the legs basically work exactly the same way. Swivel on the on the hinges, I should say, swivel hinges on the individual limbs, and then you got swivel on the hands, and of course the head. Wish there was some a little bit of articulation in the lower jaw where the jaw could have opened and closed. Again, it does feel there's a little give, but I think it's just because it's using a softer rubber here versus the denser plastic up here. And just actually as a side note too, the teeth are not to the point of drawing blood, but they are a little on the sharp prickly side. And there is Mongroid. Just to kind of give you guys as I'm sure somebody will probably be asking as well, how does he stack with the rest of the tortured souls? Well, let's bring them in all in here. And I've kind of just kind of got them all over the place here. So if I just reach off camera, there he is, next to a slightly unstable and yet still being able to stand luckily. I'll just bring that up there. Uh, this is of course Talisac. You got your mong mongroid mongroid and then we just reach off camera bring this guy in here okay we got agonistus which again i really like the look of him. he's kind of got that samurai look which i'm digging uh one of the more disappointing figures and it, if if i was to say any of the figures are disappointing it would be this guy only because of that back contraption that he's got I think that really impedes, really impedes uh, pegging that into place. So I'm just, again, ultimately going to probably glue that. Glue it, call it a day. I won't spend much more time on it because it's just a pain in the butt. Um, despite, just get him to stand here. There we go. Despite the fact that he does, uh, you know, despite the fact that uh, Talisac here has as much going on for him in the way of what you have to hang him up and you know the chains in the face and stuff like that he actually is easier to kind of keep intact than the back compartment here of Scythe Meister and then rounding up the remaining figures just reach out and grabbing these kind of these two got stuck together here's the first figure that we had looked at. This is Venel Anatomica. And lastly, there is, just get her to stand, Lucidique. And there is all the Tortured Souls from Series 1. Just again, kind of getting a first, not so much a first, but kind of just like looking the lay of the land. All of them, again, are very uniquely different to one another. It's not like they simply just took the same sort of costume design and just changed up the faces. Like, they are very drastically different from one another. I think my favorites still are probably Venel and Atomica and Lucidique. I think my third favorite... I don't know, it's hard to say. Like, my third favorite, I could potentially say, is Talisac because he's, I, I like the nature of just a dangling body by chains. But I kind of like Mongroid as well. Each of each of these figures, again, brings something different to the table. I suppose my least favorite, just by the virtue of the way he's constructed, uh, is the Scythe Meister, just with that back. But other than that, I'm really happy overall with all of these figures. Mongroid very much took a different departure from the upright standing figures that we got with the other five figures, instead favoring something that's on all fours. And I think because he is so different in the way he, that he stands, makes this figure really stand out amongst the others. Now granted, all of them do bring something different to the table and all very unique with their presentation. Talisac is very unique in the sense that he's just a dangling body hanging from an apparatus, but I really dig this guy. His colors are simple, uh, keeping very light, light shades of flesh tone, and then basically working around the gimmick. And the big gimmick is the giant jaw mouth that's coming out from his stomach. It's very successful. It's not a figure that you really can do a lot of posing for because really any bit of posing outside of what we're looking at right now 
drastically throws off the intended design sculpt for what McFarlane wanted you to pose this guy at. This guy clearly is a figure that's posed a certain way that you basically have to keep him that way for him to look like what we're looking at right now. Uh, I kind of kept this guy to the last because he was more the simplistic figure, but he ends up being one of my favorites just because he's so unique in his design. I love that open jaw. It's just so, so cool looking on this figure. Uh, today, we were having a look at the final figure from the, this was the Twisted Soul Series 1. This was the collaboration between Clive Barker and McFarlane Toys, producing a wide range of very gruesome yet very cool figures that you can put on display and today we were having a look this was the final figure uh, coincidentally also enough this was also figure six so it worked out well that we're looking at the final figure in the final video of the twisted souls this was uh figure six mongroid mongroid if you guys have liked this video and certainly want to hit a like, a like on this video that would always be appreciated and if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe to this channel Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. You won't miss a beat when it comes to future videos. And just because we finished the Tortured Souls lineup, I guarantee you there's still tons of videos lined up for the, run the rest of Spottober. So make sure you're staying tuned to this channel. Uh, there's going to be, the, of course, the spooky reviews. But, of course, there's going to be regular normal reviews happening on during this month as well. So it's not just, it's not all horror-related, spooky-related stuff. There's going to be some superhero reviews and other things in there sprinkled in there as well during the month of Spottober. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do. I'll see you next time. <laughs>